In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, by whom alone all kings reign, and princes decree justice, and from whom alone commit all counsel, wisdom, and understanding, we, thine unworthy servants here gathered together in thy name, do most humbly beseech thee to send down thy heavenly wisdom from above, to direct and guide us in all our consultations, and grant that we, having thy fear always before our eyes, and laying aside all private interests, prejudice, and partial affections, the results of all our counsels may be to the glory of thy blessed name, the maintenance of true religion and justice, the safety, honor, and happiness of the Queen, the public weal, peace, and tranquility of St. Lucia, and the uniting and knitting together of the hearts of all persons and estates within the same, in true Christian love and charity, one towards another, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Good morning, Senators. Hello. I beg to announce that since the last sitting of Parliament, His Excellency has been pleased to assent to the following bills. Companies Amendment, International Trust Amendment, International Business Companies Amendment, International Partnership Amendment, Income Tax Amendment, Automatic Exchange, exchange of Financial Account Information Amendment, Agreement on Extradition, St. Lucia and the French Republic, Free Zone Amendment, Child Care Protection and Adoption, Child Justice. I beg to report that I have received correspondence from the Speaker of the House of Assembly, advising that the following motions and bills were passed in the House of Assembly and forwarded to the Senate for its concurrence. The Finance Administration Act, Resolution of Parliament to authorize the Minister for Finance to guarantee borrowing by the St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority, SLASPA, to finance the Himanora International Redevelopment Project, was passed on Tuesday, 11th December 2018, and on Wednesday, 12th December 2018, the Finance Administration Act resolution of parliament to authorize the minister of finance to borrow from export import bank of the republic of china taiwan for capital expenditure to finance the road improvement and maintenance pro program the infrastructure repairs to schools and the housing development program finance administration act Resolution of Parliament to authorize the Minister for Finance to borrow from the Bank of St. Lucia Limited for capital expenditure to finance the National Sports Infrastructure Strate Strategy and Action Plan and the 2018-2019 Budget. International Trust Repeal, International Partnership Repeal, and the Gaming Control Amendment was passed. I extend Christmas greetings to all members of Parliament the staff of Parliament, the staff of the Office of the Parliamentary Commissioner, members of the Diplomatic Corps, members of the St. Lucia Royal Police Force, the Office of the Mayor, and all public servants. And last but not least, the staff of NTN and the media. Statements from Ministers. Papers to be laid. Honorable Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister with responsibility for the public service and leader of government business.
Madam President, I beg to lay the following papers standing in my name. Statutory instrument number 98 of 2018, Finance Administration Act, Resolution of Parliament to Borrow for Capital Expenditure, Health System Strengthening Project. Statutory instrument number 99 of 2018, Finance Administration Act, Resolution of Parliament to Borrow, to Guarantee Borrowing by the St. Lucia Development Bank for the, for the National Insurance Corporation. Statutory instrument number 100 of 2018, Value Added Tax Act, Resolution of Parliament to approve draft value added tax amendment of Schedule 3 order. Statutory instrument number 101 of 2018, Finance Administration Act, Resolution of Parliament authorizing the Minister for Finance to borrow by means of advance. Statutory instrument number 102 of 2018, revised edition of the Laws Act, resolution of parliament to authorize the making of the 2014 supplement of the revised edition of the Laws of, of the Laws Commencement Amendment Order. Statutory instrument number 103 of 2018, Finance Administration Act, Resolution of Parliament, authorizing the Minister for Finance to borrow for capital expenditure. Organization of Eastern Caribbean States Micro, Small and Medium Sized Enterprise Guarantee Facility Project. Statutory instrument numbers 104 of 2018, Finance Administration Act, Resolution of Parliament to borrow for capital or recurrent expenditure. Eighth Water, Denry North Water Supply Redeve Redevelopment Project, amending loan agreement. Statutory instrument number 105 of 2018, Finance Administration Act, Resolution of Parliament to borrow from First National Bank, St. Lucia Limited, for capital expenditure to finance the 2018-2019 budget. Statutory instrument number 106 of 2018, Finance Administration Act, Resolution of Parliament to borrow from First National Bank of St. Lucia for capital expenditure for infrastructure development. Statutory instrument 10, number 107 of 2018, Tourism, Stimulus and Investments, Darren Charles Investments Incorporated Order. Statutory instrument number 108 of 2018, Tourism Incentives, Darren Charles Investment Incorporated Order. Statutory instrument 109 of 2018, Fiscal Incentives, Paradise Food St. Lucia Limited Amendment Order. Statutory instrument number 110 of 2018, Revised edition of the Laws 2014 Supplement to the Revised Edition of the Laws Commencement Amendment Order. Statutory Instrument Number 111 of 2018, Price Control Amendment Number 16 Order. Statutory Instrument 112 of 2018, Excise Tax Amendment of Schedule 1, Number 6 Order. Number 16 order. Statutory instrument number 113, 113 of 2018, Tourism Stimulus and Investment, Le Sport St. Lucia Limited order. Statutory instrument number 114 of 2018, Tourism Stimulus and Investment, Safari St. Lucia Limited order. Statutory instrument number 115 of 2018, Tourism Stimulus and Investments, Malabar Beach Limited Order. Statutory Instrument Number 116 of 2018, Legal Profession Eligibility, Sira Mari Abraham Order. Statutory, statutory Instrument Number 117 of 2018, Mutual Assistance in Criminal Matters Agreement, 
St. Lucia, and the French Republic regula regulations. Statutory instrument number 118 of 2018, value added tax amendment of Schedule 3, order. CIP, St. Lucia, 2017-18 annual report. And finally, Madam President, Invest St. Lucia, annual report 2017. Motions. Honorable Leader of Government Business. Madam President, I beg to move the following motion, standing in my name. Finance, Finance Administration Act, Resolution of Parliament to authorize the Minister for Finance to guarantee borrowing by the St. Lucia Air and Seaport Authority, SLASPA, to finance the Hironora International Airport Redevelopment Project. Whereas, it is provided under Section 41 of the Finance Administration Act, Capt. 1501, that a guarantee involving a financial liability is not binding on the government unless the minister grants the guarantee in accordance with the enactment or with the prior approval of Parliament by a resolution of Parliament. And whereas, it is further provided under Section 42 of the Finance Administration Act, Capt. 1501, that any obligation arising from a guarantee given in accordance with Section 41 is a debt charge, and all debt charges for which the government is liable shall be charged and paid out of the consolidated fund. And whereas the Minister for Finance considers it necessary to guarantee a loan in the amount of US $100 million from the Export-Import Bank of the Republic of China, Taiwan, by the St. Lucia Air and Seaport Authority for the purpose of financing the Uranora International Airport rede Redevelopment Project. And whereas the loan is repayable over a period of 20 years, from the date of the first disbursement of the loan, inclusive of a five-year grace period. And whereas the interest is payable at a rate of six months, London interbank offered rate plus 1.5% per annum. And whereas the loan payments shall commence after the grace period of the five years has expired. And whereas Interest shall be paid in the amount of U.S. $2,195,000 semi-annually during the grace period and thereafter, after the six-month London interbank offered rate. And whereas the terms and conditions proposed by the Export-Import Bank of the Republic of China, Taiwan are accepted, be it resolved, that Parliament authorizes the Minister for Finance to guarantee in the amount of US $100 million from the Export-Import Bank of the Republic of China, Taiwan, by the St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority for the purpose of financing the Uranura International Airport Redevelopment Project. Be it resolved that A, the loan is repayable over a period of 20 years from the date of the first disbursement of the loan inclusive of a five-year grace period. B, the interest is, pay is payable at a rate of six-month London interbank offered rate plus 1.5 per annum. The loan payments, C, the loan payments shall commence after the grace period of five years has expired. D, the interest shall be paid in the amount of U.S. two million. $195,000 semi-annually during the grace period and thereafter at the six-month London interbank offered rate. And E, the terms and conditions proposed by the Export, in Export Import Bank of Republic of China are accepted.
Senators, the question is that Parliament authorize the Minister for Finance to guarantee a loan in the amount of 100 million United States dollars from the Export Import Bank of the Republic of China, Taiwan, by the St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority for the purpose of financing the Hiwanora International Airport Redevelopment Project. Madam President, my apologies. Allow me to, please allow me to give a briefing of this resolution before you proceed. Uh, no. Go ahead, um, Leader of Government Business. Thank you very much, Madam President. Madam President, this is a very important motion and resolution that I just cannot present it without giving some explanation as to the reason why we are here. Although the resolution speaks of it in terms of the financing and the purpose of the loan. But, Madam President, this is a very important project that this government sees necessary to undertake at this juncture in our economic history. Madam President, first of all, the HIA, the Uranura International Airport Redevelopment Project, is very important. It's a need. I say it's a need for the country for various reasons. The last time, there's, in fact, the current HIA, the upgrade was actually done about 25 years ago. It was actually in 1993 when there was the last upgrade of the Uranura International Airport. 25 years. Now, Madam President, like any other infrastructure, any other building, 25 years is a lot of time for that building to endure. But more than that, Madam President, at the time when the, the HIA was upgraded 25 years ago, in 1993, the number of visitors coming through Uranura Euro International Airport was just above 200,000 um, visitors. And today, Madam President, we have about close to, or above rather, 400 visitors pass through the doors of the Euronera International Airport. Four, 410,000, sorry, Madam President, visitors pass through the doors of Euronera International Airport. Now, for any of us who have actually been through or passed through the Euronera International Airport, especially during the busy period, if you go there, Madam President, between the hours of, let's say, 1 o'clock to about 4 o'clock, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. We have reached a capacity, the, you know, the Euronera International Airport is in a capacity issue right now, a problem. We cannot grow, Madam President, our tourism product without undertaking the infrastructure that is currently, I would say, Madam President, hampering our development in the tourism um, um, sector. So, Madam President, we must undertake the congestion that we are currently facing at the Uranura International Airport. Madam President, not only that there is a capacity issue, but Madam President, when you pass through the airport, either coming in or going out, you would find that those individuals leaving would cross those who are entering. And that is a major international um, standard breach. So 25 years later, Madam President, we have to ensure that we meet the international standards as required by the industry. So this new entity, or the redeveloped entity, uh, um, entity will ensure, Madam President, that we take care of this 
very serious breach. Now, Madam President, I have heard many, many times before, especially in the lower house, of that the government comes here and borrow money, borrow money, borrow money. Well, first of all, we have to borrow money because we don't have the money. We don't have it. But what is more pressing, Madam President, is that you would hear, especially from the, the opposition, that we are increasing the debt of government. Madam President, yes and no. Let me explain why. As clearly stated in the resolution, that this is a guarantee. Now, Madam President, when you look at the debt stock of our country, okay, you have, you have that what we refer to as international, well, international debt of uh, um, local and foreign debt. But we also have a section where we, where we actually government guarantees debts on behalf of entities. So it is not, it is part of the government's talk, debt stock, but the responsibility of paying that debt lies with that entity the government guarantees the loan for. So in this case, Madam President, we are guaranteeing a loan of US $100 million on behalf of SLASPA, on behalf of SLASPA. Yes, Madam President, our debt stock will increase by $100 million. But what is more important, Madam President, is the ability to pay. The ability to pay. So borrowing is not an issue. It's the ability to pay that loan. And the responsibility, Madam President, of paying that $100 million is not the government of St. Lucia, but the St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority. Now the question is, the question is, Madam President, are there risks? Of course there will be risks, Madam President, with any debt transaction. There will be risk. But the important thing is, you have to ensure that you minimize your risk as much as possible. So wow, how have we, Madam President, as a government, minimized our risk in that guarantee? How have we? We have ensured, Madam President, that the loan will be paid or repaid by SLASPA by allocating, Madam President, 35, 35 US dollars per visitor to our country to pay that loan. So SLASPA will have a source of financing, Madam President, which actually started in January of this year when we increased the departure and the airport development tax um, up to 98 US dollars per passenger. This guaranteed, Madam President, very guaranteed. I mean, the risk one can look at, okay, Madam President might say, okay, um, I, would there be a decrease in the tourist arrival in St. Lucia? Madam President, we have seen that over the years, in fact, in the last two years, we have had record numbers of visitors to our shores. And because of the kind of the product we have in St. Lucia, Madam President, the increase in the airport departure tax or the airport development tax has not reduced the arrivals. In fact, you see an increase because of the product that we have. We have a product that is what we refer in economics as being very price inelastic. In other words, a change in the price, an increase in the price will not affect the arrival numbers negatively. So the risk, as far as the loan payment is concerned, is very, very low. And the second reason, Madam President, that is it the second reason I can see uh, we have to, under we have to um, take in consideration is Slasper himself. Slaspa. It was very, very sad, Madam President, when I sat right here and listening to the former Prime Minister, the Member for Parliament, 
trashing Slaspa. Trashing Slaspa. Pushing Slaspa under the bus. I mean, Madam President, I mean, we have to be responsible as politicians, you know, especially when you are former Prime Minister. You know, giving, you know, speaking of Slaspa as being not having credit worthiness. You know, Madam President, when you look at the record of Slaspa, the financial statement of Slaspa, Madam President, it speaks differently. Slaspa has won many awards over the years, many awards, not local, but regional awards, Madam President. So this government, Madam President, believes in the, in the management of Slaspa. And that's the reason why, Madam President, we believe that we have minimized the risk both in providing the revenue source to finance the loan for SLASPA and also in the management team of SLASPA. <clears throat> Madam President, also, the question is, why did we go that route? Why did we go that route? Because, Madam President, you'll understand that there was a previous model as to how to finance finance the this HIA that is give up the operations complete complete surrender of our national international airport to a foreign entity for 30 years by the president 30 years and the justification for that Madam president is that we will not be increasing our debt. Is this a justification for surrendering your national, international airport to a foreign entity for 30 years? Is this a justifiable reason? Madam President, I was told, and I heard it right here, that even during the bidding process, there was a stack of individuals who submitted proposals. Because, Madam President, this was good. That's a big deal. Big deal. But Madam President, we believe that we have the human resource capacity in this country as proven by the management of SLASPA to run our air and seaports. We will not surrender our, our, we will not surrender our airport to any foreign entity for 30 years. We will not. We will not. So Madam President, the question is, why would one enter a PPP, a public-private partnership? Why would one do that? Let me tell you something, Madam President. In general, I'm speaking here. Why would one enter a PPP? Let me tell you why, Madam President. One enters a partnership when he or she or a government takes stock of what he or she has. In other words, Madam President, you do what we refer to as a SWOT analysis. You check what you, where, your, where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are, where your capabilities are, where your capacities are. Madam President, you take stock of yourself, and you're saying that if I were to continue, if I were to develop, redevelop the airport in this instance, what do I need? What do I have? Madam President, this government realized that they have all what is required to redevelop the Urano International Airport. Everything. They have the human capacity and they have the capacity to raise the financing for the redevelopment of, the redevelopment of that airport. And we did. We developed the revenue source balance or the revenue stream for the redevelopment or the financing of this redevelopment. And of course, Madam President, we have the human resource cap capacity. So why do we have to go out there? Why, Madam President? Just to say that we will not increase our debt? Madam, Madam President, this is very, to me, very, very immature, very naive thinking, and very irresponsible, Madam President. As I said earlier, 
This is not a burden on the government. This guarantee is not a burden on the government. Madam President, you know, I was speaking with my colleagues in, in, in cabinet at one point in time, or during our caucus, Madam President, and I gave an analogy. And the analogy was, Madam President, you have a bus driver. A bus driver. The bus broke down. Maybe the four tires not working. Or the four tires, you know, it needs four tires. And you have a guy coming to the, the driver, the bus owner, and saying to the owner, Madam President, that, that's a, you don't have to borrow money to put four tires on that vehicle. That will increase your debt. And the guy said, Gasa, that's true. Eh? That's true. Eh? I would increase my debt. Eh? And the guy said, Gasa, I will go ahead and borrow that money for you. Or borrow that money. And give me the minibus. Give me the minibus. For five years. For five years. And I'm going to run that minibus for you. You know, Madam President, I'm going to run the minibus for you. So what happened, Madam President? This guy who went to take the loan to put the four tires is now running the minibus, making money, and the guy who owns the vehicle makes nothing. That's exactly what would have happened to our HIA for 30 years, Madam President. 30 years. 30 years, Madam President. But this resolution speaks of 20 years. We have a five-year grace period. Five-year grace period, Madam President, where we only pay the interest rate, which means, Madam President, that, which means, Madam President, we will have sufficient monies to collect within the five years during that grace period, which we can shorten, shorten the, the, the principal repayment period of the 15 years. Madam President, this is not rocket, rocket scientist. This is just being what? Responsible. If you go out of this model, away from this model, Madam President, you have been reckless and irresponsible. Madam President, talking about debt, we have taken upon ourselves, Madam President, we have taken upon, upon ourselves as a government to very soon, Madam President, to pass a, a piece of legislation called the fiscal rule legislation, Madam President. It has passed through cabinet already. Now it's in drafting stage, ensuring, Madam President, that we curtail our spending. We constrain ourselves, Madam President, as far as spending is concerned through with this piece, new piece of legislation that's coming very soon, Madam President. So we are government that is responsible as far as our debt control, our debt management is concerned. And Madam President, I've heard also spoken about the, we're going to increase our debt to GDP. Of course, of course, this has its role, debt to GDP. If you add 100 million US dollars to our existing debt, debt, our existing debt stock, our existing debt stock, Madam President, it will be just a minuscule increase, a minuscule. And what I'm saying, Madam President, while that debt stock, while the, the debt to GDP will increase, what is more important is our debt to service ratio. This remains unchanged with this guarantee. In other words, Madam President, if you are paying if we are paying, currently paying 24 cents out of every dollar that we receive entry into paying down our debt, it remains the same. It remains the same because it is not the government's responsibility to pay that loan. It is SLASPA responsibility. So, Madam President, there is another reason why this project is important. It is not only to ensure that we increase the capacity We deal with the congestion. But Madam President, this is a very strategic project, very strategic. This project is in the south of the country. The south that has been neglected for such a long time, Madam President. And we believe it is a very strategic move by the government to ensure that we increase the economic activity of the south for the people of the south and for the people of this country. 
Madam President, an international airport with very little economic development around that economic development um, that that's, um, international airport, Madam President. Very strategic, Madam President. We, we see the value, not just an airport redevelopment, but economic activity in the south of the country. Madam President, the new frontier is there. We are at the brink of a new frontier in the south. And this redevelopment will kick off the commencement, the commencement of this new frontier. So, Madam President, the lower house did not vote, did not vote for this resolution. The, the opposition in the lower house, rather, Madam President, the opposition in the lower house, Madam President, I know it's Christmas time, I know my mind is a little more on the Christmas. But Madam President, for such an important development in the south of the country, Madam President, I am not sure exactly what's wrong with the south when it comes to the opposition. There seems to have some I don't want to use a word that, that strong word, but a, 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 a hit for the South. But here it is, Madam President. We are pouring money or guaranteeing monies for SLASPA to redevelop the South of the, of the, the Huron International Airport, located in the South, and the, the opposition has rejected and has not approved voting against this resolution. Let me see, Madam President, if they would be the same in the Senate today. Oh, my goodness, Madam President. Redevelopment of the South, I mean, the, the International Airport in the South, Madam President. You've voted against that? And Madam President, the worst thing about it is, Madam, it's the, you have the MP and former Prime Minister, Madam President. And in the South, you have three MPs in the opposition. Three. You have Vivot North, Vivot South, and you have Labry, Madam President. All three voted against the, re the redevelopment of the Urinary International Airport. That's a travesty, Madam President. That's a travesty, Madam President. The people of the South, um, the people of the South, Madam President, voted these three MPs, Madam President, to represent them. And they have failed the people of St. Lucia of the South when it comes to the voting for the development of the Vivot um, International Airport. What is, what a, Madam President, is this representation? Is this representation, Madam President? There are things that you oppose. There are things that you must support. And this is a project, Madam President, that should have been supported by the opposition when it was brought to the House two weeks ago. So, Madam President, so we are here. We are waiting with bitter breath. To see, to see if the Senate opposite would vote for or against this resolution. Thank you, Madam President. Senators, in your um, submission, let us remain, um, let us not forget to keep the language parliamentary. Hit. You could find a better way to say, to say hit than hit. Okay. <clears throat> Senators, the question is that Parliament authorize the Minister for Finance to guarantee a loan in the amount of United States dollars 100 million from the Export Import Bank of the Republic of China, Taiwan, by the St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority for the purpose of financing the Hiwanor International Airport Redevelopment Project. Be it further resolved that the loan is repayable over a period of 20 years from the date of the first disbursement of the loan, inclusive of a five-year grace period. 
B, the interest is payable at a rate of six months, London Interbank offered rate plus 1.5% per annum. C, the loan payment shall commence after the grace period of five years has expired. D, the interest shall be paid in the amount of US $2,195,000 semi-annually during the grace period and thereafter at the six-month London Interbank offered rate. E, the terms and conditions proposed by the Export-Import Bank of the Republic of China, Taiwan are accepted. Senator Henry. Thank you very much, Madam President. And um, may I grant leave to also thank you for your, well, your, your greetings and wishing us uh, season greetings, uh, so to speak, but also extend my voice and add to yours to wish everyone here the same, as well as the people in St. Lucia, and those persons in the Castro South, it's my family and friends, my children, wish them well for the upcoming year. Madam President, just to meet me also to, to say to those young persons at this time who may want to contemplate resolving their problems in violent ways, that it is time for them to, for us to, to consider other means of resolving problems as against a violent way and keeping our time at this, this time of the year, peaceful. Um, so I'm encouraging everyone, our young people, to be peaceful. Let us use other means of solving our problems. Crime is not the way we should seek peaceful means of resolving our problems. Madam President, as I listen and I listen to the presentation by the leader of government business, I am not one who like to credit, not chastise, but I've heard better in time past. And for a moment, I thought his presentation seemed more like what I would have heard in the, in the, in the market, not, not in the market step, but in the boulevard, the place where people do the politi politicking. Madam President, let me state for the record that the St. Lucia Labour Party support and initiated work on the, Euro, the redevelopment of, of the Euronora International Airport. It's important that we state this. Very important. But I will proceed with my presentation, lest I be distracted by you persons over here. At the debate of the lower house, Madam President, and, I, and he alluded to it here, there's one statement that lingered with me is when a member indicated that it's all about cash flow. Once you can loan money, once you can pay, you, should you can borrow cash flow. And I heard it here again, making the justification for borrowing 100 million U.S. dollars. Depuis où ça paye, on y justifie à pour pouter la hansala. Madam President, I would make this point here because it's a point, it's a point that needs to, that, that every St. Lucian who, who probably contemplating building their home, buying a car, buying an equipment, investing their monies, they should understand that. Not everything or anything you can buy means that you should own it. And not everything that you own means that you should operate it. Your ability to own something is not the same ability that is required to operate it. And I will speak to this a little, a little more as I proceed. Sable dilani moon yo ni ba ko ek se pa yo ki ka opowe. O moun ka opowe ba yo paske yo mem pasa opowe. Lani moon pitet ki ni hotel ek se pa yo ki ka kui hotel la lot moun ka kui.
We all understand that borrowing becomes necessary at times. And one would expect a government to be responsible, judicious with the business of borrowing, Madam President. Also, a government must be mature, mature enough upon taking office to continue with activities of a former administration. Maturity is important. And I will explain why I'm making this point, Madam President. Responsibility, maturity, being cautious, is important in governance as against irresponsibility, respons irresponsibility, childishness, and recklessness. But what is this government? What has this government given up that was beneficial to the people of St. Lucia that we speak of? What exactly is it, it is? Madam President, as the, the, the member on this side well described, it was the Public Partner Partnership, a PPP, Arrangement for the Uranura International Airport. It was negotiated through the IFC with the World Bank. But what exactly is a PPP? What exactly is a public private partnership? What exactly is this, Madam President? But more importantly, while St. Lucians may have heard the term PPP all over the past through the debate, and I think it has been mentioned over and over in this house, last week, the term PPP was featured in the regional news. Barbados is moving. Well, I thought, instead of postulating about the, the former prime minister and all of the, you would have enlightened, you would have enlightened, you would have enlightened St. Lucians and make a case about the, the development of Uranura International Airport. So I'm forcing you now to discuss it, whereas you had an opportunity to come. That's all I'll do over here, you know, is to rebut. But you do not have a prepared presentation on the Uranura International Airport. Zot ka just we pon sa moun di me, zot men pani pièce information pou bay moun. Abek zot tout ni pou rebut. All of you, that's what you'll do, rebut. But let me go on. Let me stay focused. Let me stay focused. So, Madam President, and for most of us in St. Lucia, you know, Barbados seemed to be a very good model at times. And, of, of course, I know St. Lucia like to reference Barbados. They like to reference other countries. But I will speak more. There's more countries than Barbados who have embarked on PPPs. More. And I'll tell you, the approach that you are suggesting is the one that Trinidad, Trinidad did with the Piaco Airport. There lies the $1.6 billion, 11 point something billion dollars investigation into the Piaco corrupt practice of the airport but let's wait madam president why a ppp and this is what according to dr anthony murner and douglas lump professionals from the united kingdom highlighted a ppp allows for the delivery of services to be transferred from the responsibility of the public sector to private operators over a specified contract life. It has at its core the need of public sector accountability with private sector discipline, expertise, and efficiency. The traditional, the traditional Approach, Madam President. Madam President, and I'll beg your indulgence so that I can continue to make my presentation. Uh, Senator Henry, can we 
I need to hear Senator Henry's contribution. Can we please keep it below the radar? Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, governments in the past have been using what they call the FBMO approach. Simple. They finance, they build, they maintain, they operate. They finance, they seek the money, they build it, they maintain it, and they operate it. Dr. Myrna and Douglas Lamb, through a thorough and years of analysis in the United Kingdom, have put all of these functions into perspective and an analyzed them and value to what extent is the public sector having success along those lines. And Madam President, Dr. Murna and, uh, Dr. Murna and Lam highlighted a few significant projects in their research. They highlighted Woodhill Prison. It went three months late. The public sector in, 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 in the United Kingdom was doing it. Three months late, 30% above budget. The Trident Submarine Shift Lift and both fast lane in Scotland. It went for two years plus, but 214% increase. The Humber Bridge, the Humber Bridge went up by 55% increase. The National Air Traffic Control. Madam President, point of order here. Um, the member is reading from a document and we don't have a copy of it. Could you make it a copy of the document of the house, please? I'll proceed, Madam President. Senator Henry, if you're going to rely substantially on the document, you need to make it a document of the House. If it's a passing or fleeting reference, that's a different case. Would you let me know which one it's going to be? Thank you, Madam. I'm not reading from it. It's just a passing reference to some information that I think is important. And afterwards, I can always, Madam President, just leave the entire textbook here public finance and the guide to value and risk management in PPP projects. Senator Henry, that's not how we do it. We don't leave an entire text. We make it a document of the House if you, yeah. that if you want to do that, and it's copied and distributed to all members. Madam, you want, we, we want to adjourn and send out a copy and then I can come back? Are you saying it's not a substantial part it's of It's not your... a substantial part. Please proceed. Thank you, Madam President. So, Madam President, I've highlighted a number of significant projects in the United Kingdom, highlighted by Doc, Dr. Douglas, Douglas Lam and Dr. Murna, in stating why that led growth to public partner, public-private partnerships. And Madam President, in, the two, in, the, in 2000, it became a worldwide approach, and there were PPPs in Denmark, Canada, Finland, France, Indonesia, Poland, Portugal, Spain, Sweden, the United States, in Trinidad, and in Barbados. It, PPP became a worldwide approach in procurement. <laughs> worldwide approach. So... Please continue, Senator Henry. Thank you, Madam President. So, Madam President, highlighting these issues, you would understand from just a technological analysis of the procurement of government business, of the procurement of government services, why one would opt for 
a PPP. A PPP that, can, that would link at its core the discipline of the private sector, the expertise of the, of the private sector, and efficiencies of the private sector into the need for, of accountability in the public sector. The traditional approach of doing these things have led to what we currently dealing with on St. Jude and a number of public sector projects. Of course, you understand. Of course, you could call, you could, you could, you, if you want to mention, there are some projects that you need to implement as a public sector, but there are risks associated with the public sector implementing projects. There are risks. And you have not highlighted that a risk analysis was conducted. You only spoke of a mention of financial risk. But there's more to it. There's more to it. So what is at its core, Madam President, is that the Labour Party advanced a safe, a safe approach in dealing with Euronora International Airport. We do not have the expertise in-house to design the airport. We do not have the expertise to design the airport. So we're looking for persons. This is what you said. This is what you've done. Because in the lower house, you say, I heard, it is the same. But I heard the prime minister made pronouncement about his building the terminal on the other side of the, of the, of, 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 um, on the western side. Madam President, some of the pronouncement I heard as a technical person, I was concerned. Because during the, the Christmas trough, my vehicle was parked in the parking lot and it got flooded with silt way up at the seat level. And I'm saying that anybody who is going to undertake development of the Uranura International Airport at this time must consider quite a bit. And I would have expected, I would have, and I anticipated that listening to the debate at the lower house, that this side of this, of, of the government side would come with, uh, with, with, with information to share with the public as to what are the considerations for the direction that they're taking. But like he said, it's Christmas. Like he said, it's Christmas. And because it's Christmas, it's an opportune time to deglazier, but the moon nepot saukwe, yo kaikopon, low kapote, yo sam milio de la meuche. Se yon mopa walki sorti asu fasad, gouvet am opposition, kika, kika, e klawe, bomatia, jabasak. This is what it is. So people are in, in a state of drunkenness, that's what you believe. And you could come to this, ornal, uh, into, into this honorable house and just lay it. Madam President, there's risk in owning buildings. There's risk in owning capacities. Did you consider hurricanes and earthquakes, when you think of we in the next few years with climate change owning or not having an opportunity to get somebody to operate the airport in that period? Insurance, yes. Do, do you consider the risk? Do you consider, do you consider all of the risk associated currently even with LIBOR, you suggest it's going to be 1.2%? What about the other needs that we have in this country that are not being served? Would you, as a prime minister, choose to own your airport and, and, and rent a hospital? Would you prefer to privatize your hospital and not your, and not, and not your airport? Because we cannot proceed with the hospital. There was talk about privatization of the hospital, but you are inflamed and, and, and talking about we would give our airport 
for 40 years, give away the airport for 40 years. But you are misrepresenting your true emotions because you are prepared to privatize your hospital. So there's something fake about this side. At how at, in one way you feel comfortable arguing about privatization of the hospital, but you're so emotional about giving away an airport for a PP, a what? Or oh, PPP? What you doing, PPP? I don't think you understand the P's. I do not think so. I do not think so. But we ask, had there been maturity, or one would expect that there is maturity on this side, they would be able to continue with an initiative that has benefits for the people. Of course, hospitals and, and airports and major roads and dams will always be projects that will be implemented through subsequent administrations, Madam President. I don't care how much we boast about how much the people will love us. There are things that you would start, but you would not complete. And there are things the, the, the Labour Party will start, but they will not complete. Somebody else and another administration would have to complete it. And this is a reality of our, even our homes, Madam President. We build homes, we start homes, and our children sometimes need to inherit and complete it. Because these things, like, he, like, like the member said, that 25 years is a long time for a building, an airport. 25 years. Madam President, the lifetime of buildings in the United Kingdom are hundreds and hundreds of years. But the member of government business, see, 25 years as a very long time. It is 25 years ago they, they did work on the, on, on, the, on the airport. So it's time now. And the people of the South, the people of the South, stop baiting the people of the South. If you are concerned about the people of the South, you would have completed the hospital in the South. If you are concerned about the people of the South, they would not have been in the stadium. That is what. Don't play politics with serious issues. You are coming to borrow at this point in time, and the fact that you believe in the growth that is pronouncement, you believe that once there's growth, borrowing is okay. That is what you believe. Or so you have been advised. You should tell the people that. Yes, yes, yes. You don't believe what you're saying. You don't believe what you're saying. You understand? Just confuse me like. I got this by black bears of me Anyway, keep them to the side. You understand? But I'm telling you, Madam President, to focus on the development of the Uranura International Airport and similar type projects. Senator Henry, if you read, address your remarks to me as you should, you would not get sidetracked. Thank you very much. Thank you very but much, you keep Madam President. You and pointing to the other side. Thank you, Madam President. I. I am, not, I, I am not here to be sidetracked, but of course, they, that's what they came here to do, so I will ignore them. But Madam President, similar type projects, Uranura International Airport, if we're talking about major, major capital projects that require large sums of money, the traditional approach is not how the world is moving. We do not have the capacity to raise such finance. Some of them, the expertise and the efficiencies are not there. The private sector is where we must go. We must look for the concessionaires. You understand? And therefore, the PPP, the public-private partnership, it's not something that came up because somebody was just thinking of, 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 of something wishy-washy. This is not, that's not how that came about. The World Bank advised a number of countries with challenges to take that approach in the procurement of certain services. 
Madame Président, un pays là, là, il y a un chai bagaille qui mérite nous pour pouetter la rampe pour faire. En l'hôpital, nous obligeons à l'hôpital, nous passons à faire ça à l'hôpital. Et si le gouvernement a été venu ici, il a été la rampe pour finir l'hôpital là, personne ne peut gagner pièce problème avec ça. Parce que nous ni pour finir l'hôpital là, Madame Président. Vous comprenez Nous ni pour finir l'hôpital là. Pas bien dit. Pas bien. Avec l'autre qui a venu, il a prêté la main, Madame Président. Ou ni pour montrer. A ce qui est en venir, la quantité de la main, ça là, ou même qui a venu prêter. Parce que vous avez dit que vous avez prêté 100 millions de dollars. Pièce, on passe à côté 100 millions de dollars. Qui m'a dit que vous Et c'est dit, oui, vous avez prêté 100 millions de dollars. Qui ça? Qui m'a dit que vous avez prêté 100 millions de dollars? Quand vous avez prêté 100 millions de dollars, vous avez prêté 100 millions de dollars. Vous comprenez? Donc, so c'est important, Madame la Présidente, que, en considérant les projets capital de cette magnitude, nous devons être innovatifs. Et certaines des choses que cette approche de la Présidente nous apporte, et l'une des questions que nous avons dans les pays les plus pauvres membres, c'est la question du coût de l'overrun. Le coût de l'overrun. Dans les pays les plus pauvres membres, And I speak as a quantity surveyor, Madam President. And I will tell you, Madam President, inherent, and as cited by Dr. Mernon Love in the United Kingdom, and the many projects that I highlighted there that exceeded its budget estimate by hundreds of per hundred percentage or more, the UK studied, and they said, look here, there's some procurement approach where cost determines your price. Cost determines your price. So you go to buy, you go and buy something like a soft drink, Madam President. This, for example, to make it, to make it um, simple. And you ask the person how much for the soft drink. And the person start to detail to you all of the processes. And then they said, oh, well, this month I had a breakdown on my generator and therefore the cost of the soft drink has been more so therefore your price is based on the cost and in our traditional procurement approach madam president when the contractor signs under the FIDIC or under the the, the 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 various forms of contract there are clauses for fluctuation and variations because that risk that risk is really transferred to the employer not the contractor There are very few standard forms of agreements where the risk is totally borne by the, by, by the contractor. Under the AIA, the, 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 uh, the American Institute of Architects have a standard form of contract, but it is expensive when they sign those contracts. Most of our contracts, Madam President, makes provision for fluctuation and variations that the contractor has provision. When you change your mind and certain things increases, he charges you. You understand? Fixed price contracts do have provisions for fluctuations and variations, Madam President. Because in fixed price contract, if you state that the price of cement is $12 a bag, and you can show that it went up by $15, and you use 500 bags, you need to charge the employer at $2 more for the 500 bags. Look at your contracts well. In PPPs, Madam President, your price determines your cost. So then in that arrangement, when the price is given to you, the concessionaire works back because he needs to carry the project and land it at that price and not the reverse. So in risk analysis, Madam President, you are guaranteed to pay the amount that you pay up front at the end. In this approach, there's risk involved in paying more based on the form of contract. Madam President, if in our procurement analysis we take all of these things into consideration, we will not play the politics of saying, oh, they're trying to give the airport away for 30 years. Nobody can go away with the airport. You cannot go away with the airport. You cannot go away with the airport. You understand? The airport 
What is important is that the concessionaire, not just operating the airport, but the concessionaire is using the, 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 the capacity to pay and also to bring revenue in for the government. If a storm hits and the, and the airport cannot operate, the concessionaire still bears that risk. If a trough comes and you cannot use the airport, the airport, the concessionaire is responsible. And for the, Madam President, I did some, was fortunate to do some lost adjusting, Madam President, after Hurricane Maria. And don't shout loud about insurance. Because 2% deductible on the amount insured is significant. So if you have an airport and it is valued at 100 million US dollars and you have damage and they deduct 2%, it means you need to have the 2% sitting there on the bank account to match the cost of damage. And if your damage is not more than the 2% of deductible, you get nothing. Similar to excess when the damage on your car, my brother. And the, and the excess is, is, is equivalent. What? You get nothing. And that is why, Madam President, the point I made earlier on, to be resilient in this economic hard time, we need to know what we should own and what we should not. And I shared that with the member. Some of us, our homes are too big and it's underinsured. And if it's adequately insured, the deductible is too much. We do not have that on our bank accounts. You understand? The government in designing a strong economy must decide what the private sector can do best and what we can do. Senator Henry, you have 15 more minutes. I have 15 more minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Privatize your homes? Yes, it might. Well, well, privatization of your home is a good idea too. You could rent. That means you're renting somebody else's home. It's not yours. But the importance is not owning a home as much as get, having shelter guaranteed. You understand? I'm not making the point. I'm saying that sometimes it makes no sense because you can take the loan that you build a house, five-story residential with six bedrooms and all of this sort of thing, all the expensive tiles, your porcelain tiles and your marble tiles, your jacuzzi, and when the hurricane hits and it's damaged, you do not have money to repay it. So we need to be wise as we embark in making capital decisions, it should not be selfishness. And that is written in the prayer. That's always written. Madam President, I, I, there need to be a way to have this prayer. I need to have a copy, you know. I don't know why I can get one. Every time the prayer is read, I reflect on the words. It tells me we need to put away selfish motives and selfish agendas because we need to do for the better of our people. I think the PPP was a better way to proceed with the airport. I say this with sincerity of heart and not out of political motives. I'm not supporting a side. I'm saying the PPP was less riskier for St. Lucians. I am saying, yes, I'm expressing a professional opinion. I think it was better for us. I also think there are other things that we need to borrow money for. And if we run priorities as to what we should borrow for and what we should not borrow for, but this is an indictment against this government who said that they would not be borrowing. Revenue stream? My goodness, man. So, Madam President, we are here today to borrow. We are here to put this country through more debt. And unlike the explanation the member tried to share with us, about it is last per, uh, you know, the resolution reads, the government is liable and is the debt charge and all debt charges for the government is liable and shall be charged on and paid out of the consolidated fund. Debt shall be charged and paid out of the consolidated fund. You know where is the consolidated fund? That's the people's money. That's the treasury. That's where it's being paid. Paddy slasp. You see, one of the things, you know, it, 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 it's easy to come here and try to say this thing in a way that you could sugarcoat it. It sounds nice on the airs. And then as, 
as some of you would say, it's Christmas time. Asha imun pa même mele. Gouvernement ka ka prete la han. Yo ka yo tout ka prete, yo ka prete. That it needs to be paid back. Our children need to pay it. They need to pay it. And I'm saying, I'm saying, I slash pay slash pay send Russian as far as I'm concerned. Tout bay, tout tiè ou l'on c'est ça. C'est ça gouvernement, c'est ça peuple. And I'm saying that, yes, you have the statutory organizations to run and implement services, but they are inherently government. Standing on a point of order? On a point of order, Madam President, I believe that the member is misleading the House in saying that the debt will be paid straight from the consolidated fund. It is only if the government, de the SLASPA defaults on the loan that we look at that option. But it is not to say that the debt is going to pay straightforward out of the consolidated fund. Um, Senator Henry, it, on my reading of it, I think the interpretation by the <clears throat> Honorable Minister for Health and Wellness is correct. Please proceed. Madam President, <clears throat> Madam President, for further clarity on this, I rise in a front of order, Madam President, again. Um, the resolution, is Madam President. Is it a point President, of order? Point of order. Is it a point of order? Madam President, can I proceed with my time? Madam Pardon, it's, it's a point of elucidation. Just for clarity, Madam President, because um, the resolution reads clearly, ah. it reads clearly, Madam President, that it is not the bank, it is not, it is not the government that is actually taking the loan. It is SLASPA taking the loan, Madam President, and the government is guaranteeing the loan. So SLASPA is the one responsible for the loan. But in the event that the government, um, if SLASPA defaults on Madam the loan, President, then the government comes in. So it's a guarantee. I've not given way, Madam President. I've not given way. Senator Henry, you I, sat, yes, and that's how you did. Yes. No, but Madam but President, I was if you, for your ruling. And I think it's right. If it is a point of elucidation, I don't have to rule. You just don't yield, and you yielded by sitting. Thank you, Madam President. So please proceed. Thank you, Madam President. I, I certainly deserve to bring your gift here. Yeah. No, no, no. Madam President has been extremely well to this house. Extremely, extremely. No, no, I'm personally. And she has guided this house well. Thank you, Madam President. Yeah, but Madam President, in closing, in closing, um, and I'll bring, this, I'll bring this to its logical conclusion. One, there was no need for us to retread a process that was already in place, negotiated at the level of the IFC and the World Bank for a PPP conventional current approach in financing large capital projects that would negate the government from going to borrow. There was no need. Secondly, there are areas that critically need to be addressed, social areas our hospitals, and it's an indictment of this government that the south of this island, for all the crying, have not seen it necessary to provide a better condition to treat sick people in the south of the island. They have spent more monies seeing about horses. And finally, Madam President, finally, this side of this house, like the opposition in the lower house, will not support this resolution to borrow a hundred million dollars when they found a PPP in place that could have done the same. And Madam President, just let me make this last point and I'll sit. Madam President, this approach, the hundred, the hundred million US dollars, from what I notice, is inadequate to complete the hospital. The, the airport, sorry. The 100 million US dollars is not adequate to complete the airport. It's not. It will take a lot more money to complete this, this, this intervention. 
They have not provided the total cost of the, 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 the development. What you have in the making is another St. Jude. This is another St. Jude. Because if you're going to borrow 100 million US dollars and if you will not complete the project just to start it, this is what was said in the lower house. This is what was said. There is an idea that the five years grace will allow them to collect monies to do the other parts that this 100 million US dollars is not covering. This is what was said. You're not ready. Madam President, this is very, very critical to all of this borrowing. That the monies it will not complete the project. They are only starting something and they're expecting to complete it some other means. Madam President, this is madness. Sorry, sorry for the word madness, I cannot choose it. But this is insane, Madam President, if the word is not appropriate. And this is recklessness. This is not professional. This is immaturity. And I think that we, this government, this side of the house, should be held accountable for this type of borrowing that would not see completion to the Euronore International Airport. Thank you. Senator Mangal. Thank you very much, Madam President. Madam President, we are in the Christmas season and the festive season, and I would like to take this opportunity to wish yourself, my colleague senators, senators on the opposite side, independent senators, and all St. Lucians, a Merry Christmas, and of course, a very prosperous 2019. And Madam President, I am smiling when I said a, a prosperous 2019, because I do believe yes. with the plan of this government that indeed St. Lucia will start to transform itself in becoming a prosperous place for its citizens and also for even our visitors who visit our shores. Madam President, I sat and I listened to both the presentation by the leader of government business, and also I sat and I listened to the presentation by the member, the leader of the opposition business. And I must say it is in the history of this Senate that I think that for a moment we probably were listening to two members of government business yeah. making a contribution. <laughs> because for the amount of times that I witnessed that the, the, the government side applauding to the leader of the opposition's business, while his fellow colleagues stayed very quiet and amazed at what was, or at what was involved in that presentation, I certainly thought for a while whether we had a case of, a, of an assos being played in this honorable Senate. But, Madam President, it is what we are debating about here today, an airport. An airport that I believe both sides have agreed is essential and is needed. We have no arguments there. Both opposition and the government side agree that we need to redevelop the Uranora International Airport. And why we agree is because we realize what is there is inadequate. What is there cannot meet the demand for our future in terms of arrivals in this country, in terms of the number of visitors coming in, and in terms of the number of jets landing in Viewfort. And it was just on Saturday, Madam President, that I had reason to visit the Hironora International Airport. And for the very short period of time that I was present at the airport, I witnessed all six parking aprons occupied by jets, two other jets sitting on the tarmac, and one landing, making it a total of nine jets on at the airport at that very point in time. So I could very well imagine, Madam President, what is happening with our arrivals area. Sometimes I've understood that even our passengers having to bear um, going through the sun immediately after leaving an air-conditioned jet, modern jet, having to go through the sun to get into the arrival section, not having a jet bridge, sometimes have to even stand on the outside 
because there is not enough space within the terminal building to take everybody in, in arrivals. And, and I would believe that this is what happens when we go beyond this kind of capacity. So it is, it is, it is definitely needed that we have a, the airport redeveloped. But we have different approaches. That is where we differ. We, on the government side, started a process back in 2008 where we increased the airport departure and arrival tax and started the process of collecting funds towards the redevelopment of HIA. So there was a process, and this is why I said it looked like we had a sauce in the house today, <laughs> because Senator Henry indicated that why don't you continue a process? Why must the government change a process that is already in place? Why not continue that process? So I would say to him, but your government in 2011 found a process in place. Right. And why it did not continue that process? Right. Why didn't it continue that process? So why now you must, you must say that the UWP administration is the one not continuing a process of the Labour Party being a PPP. Yeah where it is basically in its, in its infancy stage, Madam President. But you see, the record is there. The record is there. It is not just the Hiranura International Airport. They had five years. They met a plan in place. And they had five years for the development of the Hiranura International Airport. They did not lay down a brick, yeah. Madam President. Not a brick. And that is the same thing. It is synonymous. St. Jude's Hospital is another classical case. Yeah. Just the same at the Hiranura International yes. Airport. Five years, and they could not have completed it. That's it. And you want to know, Madam President, why they're afraid of this process? And why they prefer PPP? You know why they prefer PPP? It's because of the dismal record in the St. Jude's Hospital project. Because of that. A project which was supposed to cost much less. Yes. Much less, $35 million. Yes. Right? And they, they now took it to over hundred million dollars, Madam President, and they cannot finish the St. Jude's Hospital, so they're now running scared. <laughs> they're running scared. So, so hey, I can't handle big projects. So let me pass it on to foreigners to do for me. This is what is going on. Let me pass it on to a foreigner to do for me, with with the Hiranura International Airport. Because if these guys had any worth and any substance in them, Madam President, they would have realized yes. that come 2011, when they formed the government in this country, that they had already collected on the books approximately $54 million towards the development of the Hiranura International Airport. $54 million, Madam President. Where is that money today? Where is that money today? When the UWP came back into power, there was not a cent left. I stand on for a this. point of order, Madam President. I think you set the tone earlier when you corrected or you, you called upon one of uh, the leader of government business to use parliamentary language. And I note that my colleague has just stated um, these guys, if they had, if they were, if they had use, um, if they were yeah. any use. Um, some, of, some of this sounds a little bit, and these guys referring to, I suppose, members of the previous government. Um, I, I think the, the same can be, can be said, but I think the language can be improved. Um, Senator Henry, ah, Senator Mangas, my apologies. Um, yes, let us keep the language um, correct. <laughs> Thank you very much. And, and most of all, we must um, refer to our colleagues in the correct terminology, certainly not guys. Thank you very much, Madam President, and my apologies, opposite Senator. If I did use that, that language, I certainly withdraw it. Okay, I would like to stick to parliamentary procedure. <laughs> yes, you could be a bit hyped with the, with the extra clapping. Yeah. Fine. So, Madam President, if you permit me to go on. So, there was $54 million approximately in the kitty. That was there for the development of the Hiranura International Airport when the Labour Party formed the government in 2011. Where is that money today? When we came back into office, we found nothing. Nothing. So you have such an interest in the development of Hiranura International Airport, but you have utilized those funds allocated for the Hiranura International Airport development to another purpose, which you have never even declared. That is it. 
And furthermore, furthermore, you are in control. The prime minister of that country then was the member for pa of parliament for Vieux South. And two others, Labry, and also Vieux North. But yet still a project which is so crucial to the development of the South, that will create employment in the South, and also that will improve on our facility of arrivals and departures in this country. You've taken this money and done something else with it. That's all I can say. But let us look at, look at what could have happened in the five years that they were in office. Had they collected, continued with that, with that tax, Madam President, they would have collected approximately 25 to 30 million dollars annually. That would have equated to an additional 150 million dollars in those five years. 54 and 150 million dollars, Madam President. Over 200 million dollars would have already been collected for the development of this Hiranura International Airport. And would have been well advanced, well advanced. But this government now would have to start again, again, would have to start again and put in this tax again. And so the naysayers said, oh, we do not support this tax because it means that it's going to make our tourism product more expensive. The destination will become more expensive. Traveling to St. Lucia will become more expensive. And so we do not support it. They do not support it. But who are the ones paying those tax? The majority of persons paying that tax, Madam President, are foreigners, mm -hmm. tourists coming into St. Lucia. And the people of St. Lucia who are paying those tax, people like myself who may be traveling on business, are well willing to pay this tax. And we are capable of paying this tax, especially for the development of our country. Yes. Yes. But let us look at what has happened since the re-implementation of that tax by this government. Have we seen a drop in arrivals in St. Lucia? Have we seen tourists deciding that they are going elsewhere because of an airport tax in St. Lucia? No, Madam President. We have seen an increase in tourism arrivals in this country. This is what we have seen. So there's, there is even a compounded factor where we could have been collecting more than the 25 and the 30 million dollars from back then. Yes. And probably at that stage, we would have had all of the funds available for the development of the Hiranura International yes. Airport. Yes. And why was that tax removed? Why was that tax removed? I can remember back then that the, the Prime Minister and the member for Viewfort South stating that we do not have a block laid on the airport. We do not have a block laid, not a single block laid in the construction of that airport. So why are we collecting money for something that is not being done? Mm -hmm. But Madam President, look at the hypocrisy involved in that. Yes. This tax, yeah. this tax, was a tax place for the development of the airport, something that would have been mostly financed by foreigners coming in and paying that tax. Right. Yet still we decide to give them a reprieve and simply say it is because we have not placed a single block on the ground, we are not going to have them pay that tax. So that tax was stopped. But at the same time, at the same time, I remember, I'm saying so, and I remember a popular Calypsonian, uh -huh. Madam President making a particular statement about a, a, a Kenny and, a, and an Anthony situation. While we, while we remove that tax, we go about and place a similar tax on the people of this country, the very persons of this country, for the desilting of the was of the, of the yes, dumb exactly. in ancillary countries. And this tax we are paying up to today, yes. we have that tax on our WASCO bills, where we have to pay a desilting tax. Was there any desilting happening when that tax was paid? There were no desilting. So while we're taking it out on persons on the outside, we're putting yes. it on our very people in this country that they should be paying those tax, Madam President. Right. You understand? Plus VAT, etc. So, Madam President, we should have been way forward in the development of this airport. We should have proceeded and we should have done, been doing very well. So I understand the reluctance, and I saw the contradiction being done yeah. with the leader of the opposition business. One time he seems to be in support of PPP, and for the other case, he's not in support of PPP. So he's in support of PPP for the airport, but he's not in support of PPP for the, for the, for the hospital. He's in support of PPP for something else, he's not in support of PPP for this arrangement. Madam President, why? Where are we going? Where are we going with such arrangements? Madam President, where? But you see, this is the fear. 
And this is, this is the fear that they have on the other side. But this is the vision of this government, That's Madam President. Right. This is the vision of this government. This is the vision of this side. That we have developed a master plan for the development of this country. Yes. And in this master plan, we have looked at all aspects. Yes. We have looked at all aspects of development. That's right. All aspects of development. So we've realized, Madam President, that we cannot be only increasing on our tourist plant, on our number of hotels while having an airport that is not in the proper condition for its development. You see, Madam President, we're talking about home porting, and we're talking about a mega cruise ship terminal in the south of the island. This is what they're afraid of, Madam President. This is what they're afraid of. So while we're developing a mega cruise port terminal in Viewfort, and we'll be having home porting in Viewfort, that will significantly increase the number of arrivals in this country. And because of the increase in these arrivals, it will therefore make the collection of that tax a lot more annually. So this is why this process will be compounded and compounded. We will be making more monies than that $30 million annually, Madam President. And as we make those funds, we would then be able to pay or um, slasper. We'll be able to honor its debts. And we heard that Gouvernement de ska prêter l'argent, gouvernement ka prêter l'argent. Gouvernement pa ka prêter l'argent. Gouvernement ka sepli. Ça nous kouye garantie on loan. C'est même quoi, Madame le Président. Si ou ni, si ish, on, on, on particulier moun, pa sa ale l'école. Et bien moun nan pa ni l'argent pou moun sa ale l'école. Il ka y aller pour on loan. Mais si pa ni security a pou loan lan, il pe ka y vini de ou kon sa garantie loan lan ban mwen. Est-ce que ça mène à ce que vous qui avez payé l'on là Ce n'est pas vous qui avez payé l'on là. Vous avez payé l'on là si vous avez payé l'on là, 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 vous avez payé l'on là. C'est ce que c'est. Donc, le gouvernement serait seulement indépendé si Slasper ne peut pas payer ses dettes. C'est tout ce que c'est. Et quel est le record de Slasper Quel est le record de Slasper en payant ses dettes Slasper est l'un des of the most successful run statutory organization in this country. Slaspa, another one is Lusilek. Yes. And Madam President, you know what happens when Lusilek has shares. Everybody wants to buy. Yes. Everybody wants to buy. I'm longing for the day maybe when Slaspa will have to sell shares as well. Yes. I personally would quickly buy shares from yes. Slaspa. Yes. But Slaspa is run so efficiently. Yes. And Slaspa is profitable enough that it does not need shares from anyone, Madam President. Okay? Maybe Schlasper even had the option, even had the option, instead of taking a loan from the Exim Bank, could have simply come and say, let me put the option of shares on the table as well, and we could, yes. pur we could purchase as well, Madam President. So this is the organization we're talking about. Yes. But let's, let, let us look at the numbers. Let us look at the numbers. You wanted, in your arrangements, to give a foreign entity the control of this airport for 30 years. 30 years. Even at the base figure of about collection of about $30 million, would have seen almost $1 billion in revenue over that 30 years. Whereas your, the loan amount would have been less than what? $400,000? $400,000. So you're giving a foreign entity the control of your airport, the management of your airport. You have no say in what is going to happen. When you bring in these additional arrivals into St. Lucia with your home porting, etc., that amount would substantially increase. So if we, if we talk about $1.5 billion, what would be the profit margin that this foreign entity is going to make? What would be that profit margin? What more could this do for the people of St. Lucia and, and for Slasper? What more would that money be able to do for them, Madam President? A lot more for this country. And at the same time, we are putting aside, we are putting aside, we are letting go control of one of our most important assets for a period of 30 years. A strategic asset. A strategic asset. I know that there are other assets that are essential services, Madam President. But a lot of the times we heard about the PPP arrangement, and I am a proponent of PPP arrangements as well. Right? You will hear me speak next about NHC and, and public partnership arrangements. But Madam President, you have to look carefully 
at what are the pros and cons of each arrangement and what are the benefits mm -hmm. why should you give up something that is already profitable to you yes. to another entity in most public private sector arrangements whether it be in an existing situation an existing um, um project like in the case of the airport or whether it be in a new project most of the time these are borderline projects or these are borderline entities where the government or the entity is not really recognizing the profit and so they're looking forward for the assistance so that person coming in to taking that risk must not only come with just their finance and say okay i'm getting something that has been made up for me and i'm simply going to come in and make money on it this person must come with its own strategic plan how to go about making the additional revenue making the additional revenue not just giving you not just giving you a case not just giving you a case madam president where here it is i am already profitable this is a profitable venture i'm just giving it to you so go ahead and rip the benefits from it madam president so we need to be very careful but i very well understand i very well understand the fears of the opposition I understand the fears of the opposition because Beaufort South, Beaufort North, and Labry, Labry Saltibus is very crucial. It's very crucial. Yes, we want it. Yes, we want it. And we, and, 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 and we come in to take it. We'll, we'll, we'll come to take it too. You understand? The people of these areas must understand what is happening. It appears that this opposition, Madam President, is opposing for opposing sake everything that this government wants to do for the people of the south of this country and we have to ask ourselves why why are we simply being politics for politics sake no we have to if if the opposition comes up with something that is brilliant and is in the interest of the people of this country whether it be in a constituency of a of a member in government i will support it but the fact is, I have not seen that happen in the past, Madam President. And I remain very pessimistic that this can ever happen by those people on the opposition side. What a shock. <laughs> so, that is why I can challenge them with this, Madam President. Come with a plan just like this government. Come with a plan. Come with a plan for the development. Don't simply come with proposals and ideas and sit in government for five years and do nothing about it. But this government is not simply going on, on paper and say we're guaranteeing a loan for SLASPA. There is a plan. Yeah. And, the, and the leader of the opposition business said, are you simply just borrowing money all over the place and you don't even know that it's, it's not targeted? You don't even know what you're doing with the money? As a quantity surveyor, he should know a lot better. He should know that there is a plan. There is a plan that has been developed for the Hiranora International Airport. Mm -hmm. And that those funds are allocated directly to the plan there's cost estimates that have been derived for the the financing of this airport and that is where i alone know it but well, you should find out you should find out so this is this is what it is this is what it is madam president this is what it is this government this government will transform the south of this island hiranora international airport will happen the expansion will happen we need to ensure i mean i traveled recently to a small place like grenada and when i compared grenada's airport terminal to what is ours when i compare what is happening in antigua to what is ours we really i mean we really for a country in the ocs that is the leading economy in the ocs the largest economy in the ocs we have antigua and grenada airport terminal buildings being a lot better than what is happening in St. Lucia, Madam President. Had the UWP government remained in power between 2011 and 2016, Madam President, and the collection of the airport development tax, I am certain that the airport would have commenced and probably today would have been close to a point of completion, if not already completed. So this is what you need to take into your pipe and smoke. Why have you been in government for five years and you come up with a PPP? You come up with a proposal, but where have you taken it to? Where have you taken it to? So if you're afraid, if you're afraid of handling large projects, 
If you're afraid of handling large projects because of your record in St. Jude's, because of your record West in West Coast Road, yes. in RDP 1213, I understand, yes. in Rochamel, etc., yes. compare that to the record of this UWP government. How many projects have we had going into this massive form of, of cost overruns? So I remain confident, Madam President, with the record of SLASPA, with the record of this government, and with the fact that the airport development project is essential to our country, that this government is on the right track, and I fully support the development of this project. I thank you. Senator Mauricia Thomas Francis. Thank you very much, Madam President. Um, season's greetings to you, to fellow members, to the staff of parliament who are present, and members of the media, as well as citizens in our lounge. Christmas is a very hearty season for me. I just love that season, and hence, Madam President, I had to wear a color that exhibits the spirit of Christmas in the house today. I do propose, Madam President, that at the end of today's session, you afford us an opportunity such that we can extend greetings in a more profound manner, Madam President. Thank you. Madam President, the motion before us requires that we support a debate an expenditure of 270 million EC dollars for the redevelopment of Runaway International Airport. The figure of 270 million dollars, if my memory serves me right, Madam President, is the single largest capital expenditure that we will be undertaking in the history of this country. A while ago, Senator Mangal said that he, is, he understands the concerns shared by um, Senator Henry. I hope that he will share equally my concerns, or I am looking forward to some explanation as to some questions and concerns that I will express here today. Mm -hmm. Suffice it to say, my petu. Mwepe, 270 million, mwepe, and at the end of the session, mwe hope makai pe encore, because I'm expecting explanations. Madam President, this is not just the single largest capital expenditure that we undertaken as a country. In the recent past, we have met in this honorable house to debate several motions which require the government to borrow either for recurrent expenditure or capital expenditure. And if my math serves me well, we have borrowed an unprecedented amount of close to a billion dollars. I have stood in this honorable house and I have spoken about my own concerns about the increase in the debt stock, bearing in mind all the cautions that we've received from the IMF. And I think at the last sitting I did mentioned and I spoke about that in a more granular fashion. So today I'm not going to go over and give details where that is concerned. I think all honor honorable members here understand my concerns because I have shared them. Madam President, as an ex-banker, I am aware that the critical considerations that every bank views in making lending decisions, whether we're talking about to personal sector, to a corporate entity, or to sovereign, are character, repayment capacity, capital, or injection, or contribution, collateral, or other considerations as it relates to the external environment. Madam President, in terms of character, I have no issue because the government of St. Lucia has never defaulted in the past. And one can safely say that based on that track record, 
government has been able to attract loans from friendly um, governments and from the local banking sector. So there's no issue there, Madam President. Madam President, my concerns are, however, the debt service structure that has been presented to us. I need to ask questions around the collateral. When I say collateral, collateral is a form of insurance such that if there's default on the debt, we need to know, of course, what's there for that bank to fall back on and how it's going to impact us as a country. The conditions, like I said earlier, there are certain conditions that I think I need to highlight. And of course, after highlighting, I can expect some kind of explanation because that would deal with some of the elements of risk that we must mitigate as it relates to the external environment. And of course, capital in terms of the amount that is being proposed, the value of the investment, if you like. Madam President, my concern here is less about the approach to be used, whether PPP or direct. That's not my concern here, so I'm not going to debate as to whether PPP is a better approach or whether direct borrowing is a better approach. However, I need to understand from a capital or investment perspective, what is the real cost of the project to the country? I don't think I have understood that adequately. We are told that um, we are borrowing 100 million US, $270 million, but what is actually the total cost of the project? From my understanding as well, and I, can, I stand corrected, Madam President, the existing terminal will be demolished so that we can accommodate a new terminal and a new airport. So for me, in that scenario, we are essentially, well, I'm not sure, so I, I, I have not heard differently, so I need some explanation there. I am saying, if it is we are going to be demolishing the existing uh, structure, then there's an opportunity cost there. And what is opportunity cost from an economic perspective? It is what benefit that you are giving up in choosing one alternative over the other. So if we are going to give up what we already have to build a new one, what is the cost of you know, eliminating or demolishing what we already have? So I will expect an explanation on that. Because in actual fact, the true cost of the project to St. Lucia would be the cost of what we are demolishing plus what we need to invest in that new endeavor. So I'm expecting some kind of explanation. Madam President, what are the plans? I think to this date, or to this day rather, we do not know what the exact plans are. And I think it is only fair that if we are being asked to support a bill to borrow as much as $270, $270 million dollars to erect or construct or upgrade an existing facility. Bearing in mind the quantum, I think it would have been useful if we told the citizens of this country what exactly are the plans? What are we building? You know, what exactly are we building? Do we have an artist's impression of what we are going to do? Do we have a model? I seem to recall back in back 25 years ago when the airport was being upgraded, there was a ceremony and there was a model where persons were invited, and I was part of that audience. I was uh, the manager of Barclays Bank in Viewford back then. I was invited to sit down to see the model, give feedback on what was going to be done to upgrade that airport. And I thought that sort of public um, sensitization, that sort of public engagement was very, very important. And I think it's even more relevant given the amount and the uh, you know, extent of the development that we are now talking about. Um, Madam President, and um, my next question dovetails into the comment that I just made. What were the considerations in determining the extent or the size of the investment that we are undertaking? What did we consider in arriving at that? Were cheaper but effective options considered? Um, Madam President, I share the concerns expressed as it relates to the 
capacity constraints at the airport. I travel pretty frequently and I can tell you I've experienced the congestion on numerous occasions. I have experienced getting um, drenched walking from the plane into the arrival lounge and feeling sorry for a number of visitors and citizens who got wet and standing on a queue that's congested trying to get to um, their destin the final destination and thinking that, hey, it's about time we do something about that. But I am thinking there are several ways to achieve an outcome. What other options were we did we consider? Did we consider a cheaper option and, and at the same time achieving the objective that is to provide more comfort and build the capacity at the airport? Um, after all, Madam President, when we talk about investing 270 million plus whatever else might be the cost because we don't know the full extent, we have to consider that as, small, as a small country with re limited resources, there are other priorities that we have to attend to. What comes to mind is even developing the airport and listening to the contribution of Senator Mangal and the leader of government business, we are trying to attract more traffic at the airport, and that is the plan. I believe in tandem with that should be an assessment and an investment in our road network. How are you going to get the visitors from the north into Iranora Airport, bearing in mind we already have a critical issue on our hands now? I mean, on any given day, you can spend over an hour trying to get from north into Castries, much less when you have to pass through Castries to get into Viewfort. And I had a complaint every single day. So that is another priority I believe that needs to be considered, but we need to know where is the budget coming to do that. And when we speak about looking at cheaper options, I'm looking at that from the perspective that we have limited resources, we cannot do everything. So we need to be looking at more efficient and effective ways to be able to invest in this country such that we can deal with the priorities that we have before us. Um, in, in, in stating that, Madam President, I just want to add that um, while we want to give comfort to our visitors and, and so on, um, we need to be mindful that, yes, we need to give, add to the experience, but I don't know that any visitor decides not to travel to a country because of the airport. I travel all the time, I don't even, I buy my ticket, I travel, I don't consider what airport I'm going to land at. Yes, I want comfort. But at the end of the day, we, in St. Lucia, we've had a lot of repeat business. Um, I happen to be involved in a tourist-related business and interact very regularly with visitors to the country. And we have a large population of repeat visitors to this country. And when they talk about why they return to St. Lucia, they never talk about anything to do with the airport. They tell you they come because of the warmth of the people, the, the cuisine, the natural beauty of the country, the culture. You hear all those attributes, but nobody has said, well, I will not come back, or my friend didn't come back, or my husband didn't come back because the airport was inadequate. So I'm saying all this to say that while it is important that we enhance the experience, we need to look at whether it is necessary to spend that much and to what extent we are developing the airport. Let's talk a little bit about debt service, if you permit me, Madam President. The motion before us tells us that interest, I'm sorry, Madam President, debt service. The loan is repayable over a period of 20 years from the date of the first disbursement of the loan, inclusive of a five-year grace period. The interest is payable at a rate of six, of six month LIBOR interbank offered rate plus 1.5% per annum. Madam President, interest payment over a period of five years at six million dollars it works out to six million ec dollars per year Twelve. sorry Twelve. thanks 12 million dollars per year it works out to six million per uh, six monthly period and 12 million per annum 
So when you calculate further, we are talking about 60 million EC dollars over a period of five years just to service interest. Madam President, that means in year six we start to service the principal. So we are giving a bank $60 million worth of interest. I need to understand the rationale. Is it prudent to only pay interest when, from my understanding, we are already collecting uh, the tax at the airport. We have funds in a lockbox and we will continue to add funds to the lockbox. So I need to understand why it is we have to pay interest only for a period of five years. Usually a moratorium on principal payments when we're speaking about capital projects, it's usually tied to the gestation period of the project. So if it is a project is going to take one year to build, you pay interest for a period of one year. If it's two years, you pay interest for a period, you get a grace period while you are waiting to complete the project and to collect revenues. But in this particular scenario, Madam President, it is different. The revenue stream is already established. I think we, it was approved in the House um, earlier on in the year. So we do have the revenue. So what I believe this is money that we could spend um, doing or taking care of our other priorities as opposed to just paying interest. So I would like to ask the Leader of Government Business to explain what was the rationale for agreeing to a moratorium on principal and interest payment for a period of five years, equating to 60 million EC dollars. Interest rate. I just want to spend a little time, Madam President, to talk about the interest rate. The interest rate is tied to LIBOR. Based on my research, one year or 12 month LIBOR rate currently is about 3.6%. So therefore, a rate of 4.56% seem reasonable, bearing in mind what exists in the market today. But LIBOR is fluid. LIBOR is tied to what happens in the external market. I don't know if you recall, Madam President, during the oil crisis, LIBOR hit astronomical levels. During 9-11, after 9-11, sorry, LIBOR peaked. After the global financial crisis, LIBOR peaked. Based on my research back in 1989, LIBOR went as high as 11% which therefore means if we have a similar situation, we're talking about a rate of 12.5%. During the oil crisis, LIBOR had gone as high as 6%. So if we have to have a similar situation, we can be paying something like 7.5%. I am saying all this to say that um, I expect that some form of analysis, of analysis would have been done to determine whether that was the better, best approach and I don't know if there is still time for the government to consider getting a fixed rate loan. Maybe we are safer getting a fixed rate loan, bearing in line we don't have any control over the fact that LIBOR fluctuates and it can create an interest rate risk factor for us going forward. Speaking of which, we need to ensure that if it is we cannot get a fixed rate that we are able to mitigate against such an eventuality by having perhaps some kind of cushion to cover increased cost of interest and increased loan repayment. So, Madam President, that's a concern. <clears throat> Collateral. Madam President, on the E, we have the terms and conditions proposed by the Export Import Bank of the Republic of China, Taiwan, are accepted. So we spoke about interest rate, we spoke about um, payment of principal. However, and if I may backtrack, Madam President, when we speak about payment of principal, we have not been told how much the government has to pay as it relates to 
the principal sum of the loan, which will kick in as, at year six. I didn't see that. I didn't hear that presented. We heard a figure for interest. But what will be the repayment? Will we be paying monthly? Will we be paying every six months? Will we be paying annually? And what is the quantum? And will the rate of interest remain the same? We don't know that. So I was speaking about collateral a while ago, Madam President, and collateral speaks to what have we committed to, what have we agreed to with the bank in the event of default. That is very, very important. If the government defaults on payment of the loan, because a while ago, Senator Henry spoke about risk, and there are lots of risk. I spoke about interest rate risk a while ago. We have market risk. We have environmental risk physical environmental risk these days we're talking about a lot about climate change and the devastating effect of climate climate change the need to build resilience but it's all accepted that we cannot build resilience in the short term and the trajectory for building resilience is in 2030 for us to achieve some level of comfort between now and 2030 anything can happen in the physical environment how do we cushion that sort of effect so we need to know in terms of security, in the event of default, what have we promised? Is the government of Taiwan or the Bank of Taiwan coming to seize the airport? Are they going to take control of running the airport? We need to know these things, Madam President, because these are very, very critical and important questions that we need to consider. Um, and um, it's not far-fetched, Madam President. When we're talking about tourism, it's, 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 it's heartening to hear the growth that we are projecting and the investments we are making to increase the growth. But tourism is really almost a mono industry, if you ask me. Because every other major industry we have in St. Lucia feeds off the tourism industry. So when something happens, and we experienced it during 9-11, we experienced it during or after the 2008 crisis, you had issues with tourism arrivals and it affected banking, it affected the supermarket business, it has affected the transportation business, just because downstream we have so many other industries that are feeding off the tourism sector. So we have to make sure that there is prudence and we manage all the various risk elements that are associated with running a country with that kind of um, situation. We know that our, our agricultural sector is not generating as much as it did in the past, and um, that needs attention. We also do know that manufacturing, you know, while we've made some strides, we still have a way to go there. And um, at the end of the day, we want to make sure that we are focused on managing risk, like I said. CIP is another industry. And Madam President, the report was stable, and I'm happy that finally we have the CIP report in the House. I've had a cursory glance at it. I noticed we have actually issued 128 um, um, passports to citizens of other countries. I've also noticed the contribution of $5 million at the end of the fiscal year. Um, so $5 million return from selling 188 passports. I want to assess how feasible that is, how um, solid an investment that is, and whether the investment is worth the associated risk, or the risk associated with running a CIP program, as we well know, in terms of um, due diligence and breaches, and in terms of blacklisting and gray listing and the whole works. But anyway, I don't want to spend too much time on this. I think at another forum, we can spend more time debating the CIP report, suffice it to say, I'm happy that finally the report is here so we can do some kind of analysis and have a debate on that. Madam President, again, Senator Henry spoke about the whole issue of, of um, cost overruns. Um, I just want to ask the question, will there be an open tendering process through the Government Central Tending Board, um, if that body still exists? <laughs> Also, a project of that magnitude, Madam President, requires submission of competitive bids so that we can determine who is giving us the best deal for our buck. You know, so I want to understand whether we have actually put out um, Please or proceed. whether we are going to do. Madam President, just um, point of order for the 6A. 
I realize the independent senator is asking questions based on the, the, the um, comments of the leader of um, opposition business. I am not sure if that is proper um, because I was the one who presented the motion and therefore she should be directing the questions to me and not, I just need some clarification on this, Madam President. Um, Senator, she should actually be directing her questions or her submission to me and not to you. Um, and I am not to be aware um, on what basis she has founded them. So when the time comes, you will have the opportunity to um, answer as you're allowed to and you can address whatever issue she may have. But I cannot tell from the chair whether she's formulating her submission based on what the senator is saying. She has not quoted him. Actually, Madam President, she did. She did. Yeah, she made reference to what he said. Madam President, I she stand. made reference. I have, no, I have no issue with responding to what she's asking. I stand corrected if that's the case. Yes, but I'm just saying that. The submission I, should be the senator's. Please be guided accordingly. Thank you, Madam President. I'll be so guided. However, Madam President, this is all in my notes, but insofar as the Senator already mentioned some of what I have, I was barely making reference to the fact that he mentioned this, but it is in my notes. So going forward, I will not refer to what he said. I will just stick to my notes, even if there is repetition, Madam President. Thank you very much for your guidance. Uh, I was asking whether there will become a competitive bidding process such that we can get the best buck the best deal for our buck. And I believe in this context, we need to do so to ensure that we secure the best deal. With respect to the contractor, Madam President, I would like to know whether if a contractor has been considered or if that is in the works, I would like to make a suggestion that we select the most competent contractor for the job, a contractor with a solid track record in undertaking such a project and a project of that magnitude, Madam President. A contractor who can stick to quality standards, international quality standards, and not one who will come and give a shoddy work for us to head down the road we have mold or we have structural defects such that we have to demolish the airport. We want to make sure that we recruit a contractor that can deliver on time, not just in terms of completion time, but within budget such that we can mitigate cost overruns. And speaking of cost overruns, my uh, Mr. Sorry, Madam President, projects of that nature historically has uh, uh, had significant cost overruns and the Barbados Airport project comes to mind, Piaco Airport in Trinidad comes to mind. There were significant cost overruns. So that is another area we need to look at in terms of providing a buffer in the event that we do have cost overruns such that we can continue and complete the project. But the last thing we would want is to Senator, add... Senator, you have 15 minutes to complete your you, submission. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. The last thing we want is to end up with an, a failed project. And of course, I don't want to go the route of talking about our experience in that regard because it's all well known. So I want to ask whether you know, we are looking at those um, sort of criteria in recruiting a contractor. Who will be the consultant engineer? And again, if that has not been decided, based on our experience with project implementation, I believe that we need to recruit the best consultant engineer to oversee that project, as well as the best project manager or project management team to ensure that all elements of the project is addressed in a manner such that we end up with a good quality project at the end of the day. Finally, Madam President, my objective here is, of course, just to ensure that um, there is a level of prudence um, in looking at such a critical investment. 
and to ensure that um, we allay the fears of the citizenry across the board. Because from having discussions with certain persons, there are concerns, there are fears. And while we can stand in the house and debate with each other and answer and so on, there are persons outside there who need clarity and who are pair as well and need to, to understand better what the investment is about. And I think they do want some of the questions, if not most of the questions that I've asked, answered. So, Mr. Leader of Government Business, I look forward to... Sorry. Sorry, Madam President. I'm sorry, I'm being pushed. Madam President, I, um, I am looking forward to the responses that will be forthcoming from the Leader of Government Business. I thank you for the opportunity, Madam. Senator Wuji. Thank you, Madam President. Um, greetings to fellow senators um, in the House and to the people of St. Lucia. Um, I hope we have a healthy, safe, and responsible Christmas amid our festivities. Madam President, I would like to make a few comments on the matter at hand. Um, we note from the resolution that the loan is 100 million US dollars. So rounded off, Madam President, that is 272 million EC dollars. Um, I would offer the opinion that that is a significant increase in the country's indebtedness. And I am concerned, Madam President, about the relatively short maturity on that loan. And I will elaborate later on the cost. Um, given that the average life of an airport should exceed 20 years, and that we should be planning perhaps with a 30 to 35 year horizon, 20 years repayment on a debt of that magnitude, I think, is short. Um, I would like perhaps that we consider the economic impact of servicing that debt um, given the lifespan of the infrastructure that we are trying to create. The, we note also, Madam President, that the effective repayment is 15 years because there is a grace period of five years at the beginning of the project. Um, so the project will peak in terms of debt servicing possibly around 2023. Um, that's after the next election. Who knows who will be responsible for that fiscal burden. Um, but repayment of principal, all other things being equal, Madam President, will be $18 million per year if you take the principal and divide it equally across a 15-year cycle. There's approximately $12 million a year in interest, which also has to be serviced. So, and that's the equivalent of the stated amount, 2.19 million US dollars twice a year. Um, I'm concerned that this fixed amount, Madam President, is not tied in any way in the documents that we have to a disbursement schedule. One should be paying interest on the amount disbursed, unless it's a commitment fee, in which case it is related to the total amount to be borrowed. But if this is interest, then it has to be tied to a disbursement schedule and should apply only to the amount of the loan that has been drawn down. And so the fact that it is a fixed amount over the entire first five years is a bit puzzling. I'm wondering how it is calculated. 
Um, also at peak, let us imagine around year six, SLASPA will have to find $30 million per year for interest and principal, or breaking it down $3 million per month. Um, I'm sure that consideration has been given to the cash flow effects on SLAS per the institution, and it would be useful to have that information here as we contemplate this rather large undertaking. Uh, we should also be concerned, given our track record with the maintenance of public infrastructure, that a $3 million commitment per month is going to affect SLASPA's ability to service other projects. And as SLASPA is responsible for other strategic infrastructure, other ports and other airports, I think the impact on their cash flow and their fiscal position should be seriously considered. And some detail of that ought to be presented to the Honorable House so that we can be assured that this um, burden, which is significant, $3 million a month, I think is a major, is a major difference um, to its regular operations. That should be demonstrated clearly that SLASPA is able to uh, manage that because the default position will return to the central government should that arise. Madam President, at a rate of, I think it's 13 US dollars per person, roughly 33 EC dollars um, per passenger, 35, depending on the, how you, how you, um, how you uh, calculate it. Um, we need about 900,000 visitors to meet that level of debt service. We're at 400,000 visitors now, um, if the math is correct. So that's less than half. So a strategy to increase the number of passengers who will actually be paying um, the, the, well, generating the cash flow necessary to service the debt, I think, is part of the scenario that we should have before us. At any rate, um, it's a significant jump in the throughput at Uenora Airport, and there ought to be some mention of how this will be met. Um, as for the question of increasing national debt, um, Madam Chair, there has been some reference to that already, but I must point out that the guarantee remains as a contingent liability on the books of central government. And under the Finance Act, uh, we must take it under consideration that government is, central government is responsible. And at any rate, it is part of the calculation of the national debt. And so we shouldn't overlook the, the impact, even if it is within a statutory corporation. The guarantee brings it into central government finances, unless I'm wrong, which is entirely possible. But it will affect the debt service, it will affect the debt profile and the credit worthiness of central government by normal, um, by normal standard practice in the world of public finance. Um, the possibility of prepayment was also mentioned during the debate um, by uh, leader of government business. I think it would be wise to, um, to confirm that there is no penalty for such repayment in the, in the terms of the loan. Uh, we don't have any detail in the documents before us on the terms of the loan, although we are being asked to approve those terms as um, mentioned in Section E. Um, the terms of the Exim Bank are hereby approved, that those terms have not been presented as far as I am aware, and it would be useful to have them before us. Regarding the grace period, Madam President, um, the grace period is five years. Um, if we are collecting um, funds already, it seems to me that a shorter grace period might be in order. Uh, because of the interest charges, we are going to be paying at roughly $12 million a year for the use of that capital. Again, it needs to be related to a disbursement schedule. It ha that has not been presented. And also, if we have funds at hand, let us contemplate how that matches with the implementation schedule and perhaps start servicing the debt before that. Regarding the interest rates on the loan, LIBOR is just under 2%. The six-month LIBOR, London Interbank Offered Rate, um, is just under 2%, but it's been trending upwards. And so if you add 1.5% to that, you're looking at 3.5% per annum. 3.5% on $100 million is a lot of money. And the possibilities for fluctuation in that rate continue. I think it's a good idea to have the debt tied to LIBOR because it's an internationally determined interest rate. It's a market-driven rate. It's realistic. We understand that. 
but the, the vagaries in that rate, which is subject to manipulation, and there was a huge LIBOR scandal not so long ago about how it is determined, um, we have to be concerned that, that that is a volatile rate, and at 100 million US dollars, the impact on our cash flows will be significant if of even a small percentage increase in that rate. There's also a major difference between the interest payable um, um, during the grace period and the interest payable after the grace period. That does not make, a, well, it doesn't make for clarity, let's put it that way, because the risk profile should be lower during the first few years. And, and yet the interest rate is working out at a significantly higher rate than during the, the, the latter 15 years of the life of the loan. Um, there's at least a full, full percentage point between the grace period interest and the rest of the, of the loan based on LIBOR at 2.9%, which is where it's trending right now. Um, um, also, Madam President, the, if, if we are tying the debt to LIBOR and we are collecting a, a pool of resources against that debt, then it would make sense to invest that money in a LIBOR-denominated instrument so that if your cost of borrowing goes up, then your return on your LIBOR-rated deposit would also be going up to match it. This is called hedging. I'm sure most of us know that, but it's also balancing your assets and your liabilities. So if we have a pool of resources which are dedicated to a LIBOR-denominated liability, then there should be a corresponding asset that helps to hedge the risk of, of the fluctuations in LIBOR. Um, the question of also how is the loan to be dispersed? Is it to be dispersed in tranches? Are we going to draw down all of this money and have it sitting with us and therefore accruing, in, accruing interest? The fixed interest rate suggests that. I'm not sure that that makes sense. I would imagine that we would draw down the money as it is needed and as the project um, um, is implemented. That would keep our interest rates down. So why the interest rates should be fixed at 2.19 um, million every six months, I'm not certain that that has been made clear. Um, Madam President, Madam Deputy President, Madam President, um, the use of an internationally determined market rate, as I said earlier, is, is a good one. I would like to see more of our borrowing indexed to such rates. Um, but we also have to consider how that is going to affect the cash flows of the country and the cash flows of SLASPA in particular. We have been asked to look at the terms and conditions. I mentioned that earlier. Please, if we could have those at our disposal, would be very good. Um, I would also like to ask, as has been mentioned earlier, what, what is in place to reasonably assure us that the monies being borrowed are going to match the expenditure as anticipated? Um, fellow independent senator made a note of the need for the people of Senate to understand what is to be built and how much is it to cost. And given our rather dismal record of unfinished product projects and projects that never end and monies that finish before time. I feel that there needs to be an agreed scope of works, an agreed expenditure plan, and let us not also forget that at an average rate of 10% per annum for recurrent expenditure to, to maintain the airport, there is another $10 million a year that has to be considered where will it come from how will it be sourced? How will it be deployed? But generally, if you create an asset of $100 million, you're going to be generating also a recurrent expenditure of roughly 10%. How is that impacting on the recurrent revenue and expenditure profile of the government? That also should be explained to the good people of St. Lucia. Um, also, Madam Deputy President, the, the and I say this to close, we are being asked to approve a borrowing of 100 million US dollars. But incumbent upon that decision is the interim interest payments for the first five years, which is 60 
million. So we need to be very, very clear about what we are approving here. And also, if you calculate 3.5% interest for the 15 years of repayment, that is 525 million additional dollars or half a billion dollars that has to be found, which makes the total cost of this project over the life of 20 years some $850 million, Madam President. That is a huge amount, and it is not inconsequential, and we really ought to have a much clearer idea as to how the people and the unborn children of St. Lucia are going to pay this debt. Um, Honorable Leader of Government Business at our last sitting promised, and I will ask you to hold him to that promise, Madam Chair, that he would bring to this Honorable House, if he could possibly, he said he would try to bring to the House at, at the time of future borrowing requests some impact assessment of where the additional borrowing leaves us in terms of our entire debt profile and how it impacts on the resources of the country and in the, in the debt service capacity of central government. And I feel that the people of Solution need to know where we're at, where we're going, and how we're going to stay on the path that has been um, envisaged. Thank you very much. Mark. Honorable Leader of Government Business. Madam Deputy President, I beg that the House be suspended for one hour and we return here at 2.30 p.m. Senators, the question is that this sitting of the Senate be suspended until 2.30. I now put the question, as many who are of that opinion say aye. As many who are of the contrary opinion say no. I think the eyes have it. The eyes have it.